welcome to Hopeland Church. I am Junior. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this awesome series that Pastor Sean and Crystal Gare are preaching on titled, Let's Try This Again. Um, if you're new, make sure you text the word NEW to 323-405-3232 and enjoy the service. Darkest hours 
What's up, everyone? Good to see you. Good to be here today, preaching the word to you and ministering to you. Um, the second part of our series this month, let's try this again. I uh, hope you enjoyed the worship. And uh, just so you know, uh, keep uh, Hopeland Online in prayer. Uh, we are working on some strategies in the first part of this year uh, to really uh um, take steps to implement our own worship 
in our online uh, church gathering and online experience. So please keep us in prayer. We are working on that. And um, hopefully within the first quarter here, we'll begin to be able to implement that in our online experience. So um, we're real excited about that. Um, let's go into the Bible, all right? So Acts chapter 10, starting in verse one, um, I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna read. Uh, Father, thank you for your holy word. Speak to us today, God. We humbly um, come to you and we submit our life, our minds, our soul, our body, our emotions, our life to you and to your word. Speak to us, change us, and make us more like Jesus. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here with us you are leading us and you are giving us revelation as we read the word today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen. So here we go. In with respect to this series, let's try this again. And us as a community here at Hope Land this month, as you know, many of you, most of you, maybe all of you are aware that our whole focus this month is prayer. Um, and in a real way. So we are praying online uh, pretty much every day of the week together as a community, um, other than Friday, because uh, my family and I, we, we like to make Friday family Friday. And so when it comes to the serving of uh, the ministry, um, we, we uh, put that aside that day to really focus on our family, my wife and I and our kids and all that. But, um, but every other day of the week, there's some sort of prayer gathering happening online and I, we encourage you jump in, be a part of it. Let's seek the Lord together. Do it personally and do it um, within the community in the context of what, um, what we're doing. Join in, pray. Much of our prayer environments where we are posting as well. So they're live, but they're available after we, we broadcast live on Instagram and Facebook and all that. So come be a part and, and do this. I encourage you, I urge you to do this to jump in, let's try this again. And this is where it comes to the, to the message today. And the, pretty much maybe the focus of the, of, the, of the sermon this whole month is starting out with prayer, like focusing on prayer. Let, let's try this year, uh, you know, let, let, just like last year was what it was, but let's try this again and let's pray like never before this time. Amen? Let, let's start out with prayer. Let's return to God, pray, and seek his face. And um, I believe that this is what God is doing with us. This is where he's leading us. This is how he is moving on our lives and in our lives. All right? So let's, let's go here and, and see um, how God can encourage us through this word in our prayer life. So Acts chapter 10, verse one, here we go. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. He was a Roman soldier, uh, a, a devout man, and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. That's what we're gonna look at here. He prayed to God always. You know, the Bible says to pray without ceasing, okay? And, you know, and to pray always or here um, regularly, okay? Um, so I want to encourage you to pray regularly, okay? That, that's the first point, okay? Pray to God regularly. Okay, um, it doesn't say when he prayed, doesn't say how he prayed, doesn't say where he prayed, but it does say that he did it regularly, all right? So I wanna charge you, especially right now in this season of your life to pray this year, pray in this season. Let's commit to pray about everything. Let's com commit to pray about the big things and the little things. Let's seek God like never before, okay? I wanna encourage you in this. I think this is just amazing that this man prayed always. And uh, 
um, you know, and the Bible says, you know, like I said, pray without ceasing, okay? And so this word always in the Greek, this is what it means, okay? Always or regularly, it means through. It means to pray through, to pray through. Through what? Through everything. Right where you are, pray through that. What you're dealing with now, pray through it. Um, situation you're in, circumstance you're in, the people you're around, what you're doing, what your hands are on, where you work, your career, your profession, the pursuit of your education, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, pray there, pray now, pray through. That's what it means, it means through. So I'm gonna read some of this, some of the definition. It means through each moment of each circumstance. How do I approach, how, when should I pray? Through each moment of each circumstance, right? The good, the bad, the mountaintops, the valleys, the, the, the uh, apparent and possible dry seasons or, or, or just um, times of you just trying to figure out what your next step is in God and in your life. Pray through each moment of each circumstance. This is what the word means, always and regularly, over and over again. That's what it means, over and over again. He prayed over and over again. It means, you know, over and over again, always, meaning without interruption. How many of you know that our society has been disrupted? Our lives have been disrupted, everybody. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you do, our lives, our natural world has been disrupted. The flow of life has been disrupted. The rhythm of life has been disrupted. But let's not allow that to interrupt our prayer life. Why? Because Cornelius, this man right here, he says he prayed to God always. He prayed through each moment and each circumstance. He prayed over and over again. He prayed without interruption. The disruptions in this world ought not to interrupt our prayer life because it principally, this word principally relates to time in each physical scene of life, okay? The changing and shifting of our natural world should never be given the authority to interrupt our spiritual pursuit of God. Once again, point number one, pray to God regularly, all right? Um, and uh, in my home, there are certain things that we pray and do consistently in prayer, okay? Uh, this is something that we do. We, our kids now remind us, okay? Um, Giovanna, who is eight, Dominico, who is six, um, something we've done since before they could remember, we pray over our kids every single night, okay? I don't say that because, oh, give me a pat on the back, I'm super spiritual. No, we just do it regularly. I don't always feel like it. Um, I don't always quote unquote want to. I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to make you think I'm some super spiritual person, uh, but it's something we do regularly, all right? We pray over them every night. There are times if I'm like, good night, you guys gotta go to bed, you're too loud, put your toys away, good night, and they'll be like, dada, don't forget to pray for us, and um, I love that. I'm like, yes, I'm gonna do that right away. Let's do that, and so, and so that's just a practical example of something in my home we do regularly without interruption right and there is something to be said something powerful and this is the only time in the scriptures that it speaks of consistent prayer you know pray without ceasing that it is as our prayer life i mean think about we even call it that we can't live without oxygen. It's the rhythm of life that I breathe in, I breathe out. And our prayer life ought to resemble that to some, like it's just the rhythm, it's who we are. It's, 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 
It, it is part of us. We pray to God regularly, right? And this, there's something to be said about consistently communing with God and what he will do in and through you when you pray regularly. All right, once again, pray to God regularly, all right? Um, this is this is a doctrinal theological principle, I mean, throughout the word of God, of seeking God, right? Of praying, pursuing God, hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Matthew 6, 33, uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you as well. Uh, this, this notion, this principle, this, this, the theology and doctrine around this is everywhere in the word of God. And then the ramifications and negative effects of not putting God first and, and, and seeking him and, and going after him, there, 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 are, there are benefits of pursuing God. There are blessings in pursuing the Lord. There are, I mean, it's, it's just everywhere. And here it is, this man, uh, Cornelius, right? He prayed to God regularly. He gave alms. I mean, his, here it is, his time, his treasure, and his talent were regularly and consistently surrendered to God. And God blessed him, okay? He had a vision. Then at the same time, Peter had a vision about God's going to bless and, and save and God's gonna to start to move on the Gentiles. This was groundbreaking in history, okay? Because the disciples themselves were all Galilean other than Judas who was from Judea. But these were, Jesus said, I am sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel first, right? Um, so this was the, the community of believers in the early church were Jewish predominantly. So when people would say in history, throughout history and the study of history that, that Cornelius was the first um, Gentile convert. And, um, and so this, these both men, Peter and, 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 um, and Cornelius were praying and God spoke to them about what was about to go down. Cornelius sends his folks over there to get Peter. And Peter's like, man, this is, what, this is what's happening. I had a vision, right? He's putting the pieces together. He goes to Cornelius' house, explains to him what's going on, explains his vision. The Holy Spirit comes in the room and everybody in that gathering got filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. Now, this is wild. You got a Jewish man up in a Roman soldier's house, you know, and um, that, that was, they were busting through some cultural, ethnic, and religious boundaries. Actually, it was God doing it. But look what happened. We as Gentiles are saved and come to Christ. And you can point that process down to that moment in history when it began. And then, you know, then they just, then the, the gospel starts to spread all throughout um, the Gentile community in different regions of, of that area. And our salvation, you can point to that being the defining moment of the gospel beginning to spread to those that were outside the commonwealth of Israel, right? And that's when folks started to get grafted in the vine, right? That's us. We were have been engrafted in Christ in the promises of God, okay? So think about this. It happened through two men that were praying. It happened. So here we go. If, I'm gonna just read some of my notes here. I wanna give you some. I hope you're taking notes today. If you pray to God regularly, irregular things will happen on a regular basis. If, if you pray to God regularly, irregular things will happen on a regular basis, all right? Um, discipline in prayer creates divine opportunities. Okay, this isn't about religious practice. 
It's about spiritual disciplines, okay? Um, Spiritual disciplines yield spiritual results, okay? Um, God wants to strategically position you for divine appointments and divine opportunities. This is what happened with Peter and Cornelius. Go back and read the story. Go back, it's, it's, it's a powerful uh, point in our history as God's people and the church, okay? This was two men that were praying and divine opportunity and appointment happened. And it changed, it changed the church. It, ch- it, it brought that um, situation the Gentiles getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter went back to Jerusalem and, and, and that's what they call it, the Jerusalem Council. And they were like, yo, Peter, what's going on here, man? You're preaching these Gentiles, right? And he explains it and it was like, man, this was God. This was the Holy Spirit. God is doing this. And it changed everything for the church. The mission field started to spread, geo, or the gospel started to spread geographically, ethnically, and culturally and religiously started to bust through barriers because two men were in a prayer closet and God God set them up, all right? If you pray to God regularly, irregular things will happen regularly, all right? Um, God wants to strategically position you for divine appointments. Look at when we hit our knees, God will take us to places we didn't know even existed. You know, um, so he he divinely connected Peter and Cornelius, okay? And I believe this year there are divine opportunities. There are divine appointments. There are open doors that will come and open up because we choose to pray about everything. I believe that as we press into prayer like never before, God will move in our life like never before. If you establish a prayer routine, all right, your life will be anything but routine. If we establish a prayer routine, our lives will be anything but routine, right? Come on, let's not worry about finding the right people, connecting to the right people. Let, let's let's connect to God and let him connect us to the right people. Let, let's, not, let's not be so worried about this person and that person and I gotta do this and I gotta do that to, to, to be here, to do this, or to do that. And we kind of overcompensate our own efforts at times. Let's seek God and then opportunity will seek you. Let's seek God and the right people will seek you. Come on, it happened to Cornelius and it happened to Peter, okay? So don't worry about meeting the right people, church. Don't worry about meeting the right people, meet with God. Don't worry about getting connected to the right people, meet with God, connect with God, and God will make sure you meet the right people at the right time, doing the right thing. Come on now, come on now, let's seek God like never before. Let's pray to God regularly. You know, prayer, here's my next point. Prayer aligns us with God's will. It, 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 I mean, it aligns us, it positions us, it gets us in the place. Look, at God wants you in his will more than you do. God wants you positioned in divine appointments and opportunities more than you do. God desires for your life to be a life ordered by his hand more than you desire. And, and God does all that, but we just need to position ourselves in prayer and he will position us into our into what we're called to do. Don't worry about, don't over, look at what sometimes, I think we worry too much about the specif, the specificity of the, um, um, of the outcome of our purpose or destiny or this or that. Get in God, pray, seek his face, and God will order your steps. Let's allow him to do that. Let's, 
Let, 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 let's put aside the, the, the arm of our flesh and our natural capabilities and our, and our ability to, to, to navigate things in the natural world with our, our abilities, our mind, our approach, our strategy, our plan, our efforts, our work. Let's put all that to the side. Pray, seek God and allow God to position us in where we're called to, to be and allow God to connect us with who we're called to connect to this year. Pray regularly to God and prayer aligns us with God's will. Pray to God regularly. Start today. Come on, pray about everything. This isn't about being super spiritual. This isn't about um, disregarding our natural responsibilities. Um, but we gotta pray like everything depends on God. And we'll work as if everything depends on us, right? This, but but I, I think we could pray more. Can I get a witness out there, somebody? I think we can always pray more, all right? Um, we can pray more. We, we can. We Come on, pray to God regularly. Pray about everything. Pray about the big stuff. Pray about the little stuff. And prayer will align us with God's will. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Look at, we can, look at a man's heart plans. The word plan in the Hebrew it, it speaks of our natural ability, okay? It speaks of our effort, okay? It doesn't necessarily say that there's anything wrong with it, um, but there can be. Anything that starts with our humanity can get off, and without God, we'll get off, all right? Uh, but we can plan. We can think. That's what it means. It means to think. It means to work. It means to consider. It means to intend to do. But we need to understand that all of our natural planning and efforts and work and thinking and considering and intending to do means nothing if it isn't submitted to the Lord and brought to him in prayer and actually brought to him in prayer first, actually submitting before we plan, let's pray first. But, you know, before we put our, our pen to paper about our life and our future, let, let's pray. How about pray first? How about God? I'm about to write some stuff down. God, I have some thoughts about my future. God, I want to plan. Pray first. Don't even start yet. Your mind, don't allow your mind to, and your efforts to get ahead of the will and purpose of God. We can find it in prayer. We can discover it in prayer. It can be revealed in prayer. And even if you feel God has given you those thoughts, pray over them. Lord, I pray over what I feel like you're telling me, right? Because um, the word directs is different because it's what God does. It is what heaven has orchestrated. We aren't going through this life alone. We don't do this life alone. We aren't dependent on our ingenuity. We are dependent on God, his word, and his spirit, and we want his will, because it is divine, it is eternal, it produces fruit, it pleases him, and it is the most fulfilling thing for us. All right, so determines, that's what it means. Directs means to determine, to set in place. The Lord sets in place our steps. The Lord determines our steps. The Lord firmly decides our steps. The Lord makes secure our steps. That's what directs means. So this word is powerful. It's a redeeming word, all right? This word directs is, is what um, God does regardless of our past failures and or successes. It is what God does. It's his, he, he, he directs, he sets in place even our failures and mistakes and he recycles them 
for future opportunities. He knows how to make new what we have messed up. He knows how to, how to create open doors out of uh, travesties and mistakes and trials and hurt and pain. He knows how, I mean, this is what prayer does. It, it, it aligns us with God's will. This is what we want more than anything. This is what we desire more than anything. You know, it's up to us to see and, um, and seize the divine opportunities, but you can't see nothing if you're not praying. Come on, somebody. You can't seize the divine opportunity if you are not in a divine place. You, you gotta get in there in, with God in prayer. You're gonna begin to hear his voice this year like never before. You're gonna take steps and the things and opportunities and open doors you never even knew were there. Why? Because it's God working in your life and it's not coming from you. It is coming to you from him and it's gonna flow through you from him, okay? Um, so, so it's up to us to see and to seize it, but we can't see and seize if we're not in prayer. What if Cornelius didn't pray regularly? He wouldn't have had no vision. If Peter wasn't pursuing God, he wouldn't have had that vision. He went to pray and God spoke to him, okay? So our job is to hear his voice. Our job is to hear his voice, all right? Uh, prayer aligns us with God's will. I'll just uh, share a specific example of us focusing on prayer. This I was sharing this um, this past week at our prayer nights. And just recently, uh, with us as a community, we said, Let, hey, let's focus on January being prayer. And my wife just heard from God. Let's focus on prayer in January. Normally, we'd start groups. We'd be like, yeah, everybody get in a group. New year, new you, get in a group, right? Nothing wrong with groups. We're starting groups soon. Actually, our interest meeting is coming up. So if you want to lead a group or you're interested in a group, uh, all of our groups, aside from, I believe, um, an outreach food distribution group we plan to do, um, um, are going to be digital. So if you're out there in the digital space, you, you aren't even gathering with us in person, you can lead a group, okay? So anyway, um, we're, we, we push those out though to begin them in February because to focus on prayer. So I'm focused on prayer. God starts stirring our heart, man. We need to pray, seek God We're in prayer. We start just, my wife and I, just to be in prayer more, seeking God more, just going after God just personally and as a couple. Um, not necessarily for our church, um, yes, but you know we wanted to do this ourselves to seek God more. And um, and uh, my friend Nick, um, Nick King, he, uh, he's been a part of our community, and um, you know he he texts me. He says, "Man, you got to check out this particular book on prayer." And it was a, it was a, a devotional by Mark Batterson, and I'm kind of utilizing some of the scriptures and stuff I got from that book on prayer. Um, it's a devotional that he wrote, and I was like, oh, I'm going to get this. I just felt like, man, this is God. It's a divine opportunity. He just randomly said, man, check out this book. And um, then he sent me another one, and it's really about seeking God and going after God. Um, and he's sending me a copy of it. Um, so there's another. It's just God just started to bring this stuff to us. And then the, the, the next day, I believe, I was actually... Um, listening to the audiobook of this by Mark Batterson. Um, it's, and he writes really good books on prayer, by the way. Um, and if you want more of that, just DM us and I'll send you the links to, to, the, to you know, where you can get them. Um, but um, my friend Kwok, while I was listening to that, he texts me and he says, do you read just online books or paper books? Like, which do you read? Just randomly text me. And so I said, you know, I do both. I'm actually doing one right now. And he's like, well, I was, my wife, he told me his wife was, was reading one of Mark Batterson's books, same author, different book though. And he said, when she was reading it to me, it was really speaking to him, but he said, the Holy Spirit told him to, you need to give, sent buy this book and give it to Sean. And I was like, whoa, you know, I was like, wow, this is God. This doesn't happen. People aren't trying to send me books all the time, okay? And just, uh, they had no idea our pursuit and focus as we we're going to approach the new year on prayer and all this and where my wife and I were in our prayer life. But here it is, prayer. It creates divine opportunities. These, as small as they might seem to you, 
were divine opportunities for me. It was God confirming, Sean, you're going the right direction and I'm bringing provisions for you to seek me like never before. I believe this. It happened. This is within days of me preaching this that this went down. It is the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life. As you seek God, you can expect God to move supernaturally in your life. When you pray about everything, when it happens, you will celebrate it as answered prayer. This is the thing. When we really aren't seeking God and things happen, we forget where it comes from. We think we did it. We think we're something so special. And we forget to say, God, I give you glory and praise. I, Lord, I, I give you uh, worship. I worship you. Man, God is speaking to me. God is moving. Th that, those moments were answered prayer. God aligns us, okay, with his will when we pray, okay? We can't create divine opportunities. God does, okay? All we can do is, is receive them and walk through them and keep them, okay? Once again, I'm gonna say it again. Our job, church, is to hear the voice of God. Pray to God regularly, all right? That's point number one. Point number two, what is it? Prayer aligns us with God's will. Undeniable. Any narrative of a God pursuer in the word was aligned with the will of God. And when you're aligned with the will of God, supernatural things happen, divine things happen, and um, the, the world is changed as a result. Every time that person's world people they interacted with, people they came in touch with, their personal life, their relationships, their household, whatever, it changed, right? That's our vision, right? Change your world. We exist for you to encounter God, walk in freedom, fulfill God's purpose, and change your world. How is that gonna happen when you pursue the Lord like never before? in prayer, all right? And so here we go. Let's go to Joshua chapter three, verse five, all right? Joshua three, verse five, it says, and Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves. If somebody's with you today, look at them and tell them, sanctify yourself, right? Sanctify yourselves, sanctify. Come on, say it with me. Say sanctify, right? Say it again, sanctify, all right? That's, that's, a, that's what you call like a legit Bible word, right? You don't hear that anywhere else, all right? But sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now, they're about to cross the Jordan. He said, sanctify yourselves. And as a result of that, everything changed for those people, okay? They went across the Jordan, dry ground, to Jericho, and began the conquest of, uh, of Joshua and God's people in the earth. They began to change their world. Now that word sanctify means consecrate, uh, it's another word used, same, relatively same meaning, consecrate, sanctify. Say that with me, say consecrate, All right? Look at somebody, tell them you need to consecrate. And this is what it means, all right? It means to set apart. It means designated for a special purpose. It means to be totally dedicated to God. Sanctify yourselves. Set yourself apart. Designate yourself for God's purpose to be totally dedicated to God and his will. Hallelujah. Consecration is a complete surrender 
to the Lordship of Jesus. If we consecrate ourselves to God, always, right? If we consecrate ourselves to God, okay? God will cause amazing things to happen in our life. Consecration isn't about us doing things for God. It's about allowing him to do great things through us and for us. Surrender your time, your talent, and your treasure, all right? Jesus is our example. Think about it. He set himself apart. He died for us. He said in the garden, right? Not my will. Your will be done. He sanctified himself for God's purpose. He set himself apart for a holy purpose. If Jesus can die for us, we surely ought to live for him. Christ's death, I'm telling you right now, his death demands our life, all right? His death calls for our life to be lived for him, all right? Jesus is our example. Let's do this. This is consecration. Any area of your life, every area of your life, you say, God, you have veto power. You give God executive decision-making authority. You surrender the executive decisions to him. You say, God, you have veto power. I might want to go down this road, but God, you have veto power. I'm, I'm planning this, but I'm going to submit this in prayer. I'm going to give you veto power. Give God veto power. Come on now. Give it to him. He knows what he's doing. He's better at it than us. Let's give him that veto power. Sometimes we, we're so short-sighted when we're not in prayer and we only see the thing we want, the thing we think we should have right now and then, and, and, and let's say, no, God, I give you veto power. Let's not ask God to serve our purposes. Let's not ask God to serve our purposes. Let's commit ourselves to serve him. Let's not ask God to serve my purpose. Let's ask God to empower us, to grace us, to live out his purpose, right? Come on, I'm preaching good here, okay? This is just good gospel, Christ following preaching right here. Consecration is death to myself, all right? It's only in losing our lives that we find it. It's only in dying to ourselves that we truly live in Christ. It's only in dying to ourselves that we truly live in Christ. It's a process of surrender that never ends. And prayer is the catalyst. Consecration, dedication, and sanctification is a process of surrender. This isn't complicated theology. This is a process of letting go to God, my life, my future, my plans, my thoughts, my soul, my body, everything that never ends. It never ends. It, this is our life. We live a sanctified life. We live a consecrated life. It never ends. And prayer is the catalyst, not Pastor Sean preaching on the weekend. That is not your catalyst. Not coming to church, whether online or in person. That is not the catalyst of consecration and sanctification and dedication. It, the catalyst is your surrender and pursuit in your own prayer life. Here is my third and last point. Consecration is our first step. When Joshua told the children of Israel, they're in the wilderness, Joshua and Caleb, and, and that the generation they didn't pass through for 40 years. What's the first thing Joshua told God's people before they go into that next level, before they go into that promised land, before they cross the Jordan and get up out of that mess? What is the first thing he told them? Sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. Right? Um, designate your life for God's purpose. Fully and totally and entirely dedicate your life to God right now. Sanctify yourselves. And what, what happened? 
for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Consecration is our first step if we want to walk in the divine purpose and fulfill God's purpose on our lives. If you're out there and you have not accepted Jesus to be Lord of your life, I want to lead you in a prayer of consecration. I want to lead you in a prayer of, of sanctification. I want to lead you in a prayer of salvation. And so if that's you, pray with me right now. Uh, simple prayer. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as sinner. I give you my life. I turn from my sin. I repent of my sin. And I receive your forgiveness. I receive your grace. I receive your salvation. Sanctify my life. I consecrate my life for you, Jesus. Save me and walk with me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is awesome. This is what it's all about. This is the first step. This is the first step. Consecration, salvation, and receiving God as your Savior, repenting of your sins, coming to Him, receiving His grace. That is consecration. That is the first step. So if you prayed that prayer, I want to send you a seven-day Bible study. It's digital. It's online. We'll text you the link. And I want to get that into your hands. So to do that, simply text the word GROW to 323-405-3232. Text the word GROW to 323-405-3232. Congratulations. We're here for you. And we want to help you uh, walk with God as a community. We love you. Peace. Hey, Hopeland Church, this is Jocelyn with you all today. It is offering time. I like to start off by sharing a verse with you all, and that's Leviticus 2730. The verse says, Every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. So what this verse is saying is that we can show our gratitude to God for everything that he gives us and he blesses us with by giving right back to him and his community and his kingdom. This isn't some rule. Offering is not some sort of rule um, that CG or Pastor Sean just came up with or that the church came up with. It's something that's in the word of God. So I hope that this encourages you guys to go ahead and give today. I would like to let you know that you can go ahead and give by texting the word Hopeland to the number 77977. So if you guys could just go ahead and close your eyes and join me in prayer for our offering and our tithes. Father, we come to you today thanking you for giving us another day of life. I thank you for everyone that was able to join us today. May you bless them and help them grow in their relationship with you, Father. I also just pray for wisdom for, for those that are going to be handling these funds that will be given today, that it may be used to grow and glorify your kingdom, Father. I also pray for blessings for everyone that gives today. You say in your word that you will provide for us and we are trusting your word and we are trusting who you say you are, Father. Thank you once again for all of your blessings, for everything that you have provided us with, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. What's up, Hopeland? We're gonna be having two announcements. Our first announcement is Hope Group's interest meeting this Thursday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Text the word groups to 323-405-3232. And this is just if you're interested in leading a group or if you wanna find out more about them. Our second announcement is as a church, we're going to be doing prayer all month long. Secondary to that, we're going to be doing fasting and prayer for a whole week from the 24th to the 31st. We're going to be posting different types of fasting. The whole point is that uh, choose whichever one you like and have a blessed week, Hopeland. Make sure to go outside, slang some hope, be an impact in your community. Thank you so much.
Can I put my glasses on this time? Please. Okay. Welcome to Hopeland Church. I'm Junior. Um, we hope you are. Hold on, give me one second. Ready? And. Okay, we're almost done, bruh. Yeah, what's up? Oh, Jocelyn's outside. I'll just do this real quick. Joss, I know you're outside. Joss, boss, you got to hold on. I got to do salvation prayer. We'll open the door in a second. <sighs> okay. All right, we can let Joss in now. You got to do an offering? No, uh, Joss is doing an offering. Hey, Hopeland Church, it is Jocelyn, and it is offering time. Joss, boss. That was point one. Hopeland. Welcome, Hopeland. All right. I check one, two, check one, two. Let's try this again. Part two. Check one, two, check one, two. Here we go. Get in the word. Comment, uh, say good morning, bless you to Pastor Sean uh, every single, what, day of this month? Finally, after the like, test runs. Like, when you, you got in a rhythm, like, you, it's just like, it's good. You felt better, right? Yeah. Good job. Oh, it's all good. That's part of it. It's all good. He's like, you sound really good.